What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome to Day Recap. Today is Friday, March 20th, 2020. We're in the full bloom of the coronavirus, man. And so I wanted to um, help navigate the waters here and show you, you know, within how, how to safely pick a stock. Because there's so many that's running, man. There's huge stuff on Scanner. So before we start, I want to just show you guys. So during this time, I'm doing the day recap. I have a bunch of orders open. These, these orders are basically like my alerts because DAWs doesn't really have an alert. And so I put out small size so that when it hits it there, I turn around, I can see what's going on. So that's, that's my fantasy order. And so when it gets down, so let's say TNXP, when it gets down to an area that's resisting, I'll keep adding more. So these are kind of like my starter fantasy orders I'm just putting out so that it kind of triggers it so I can, I can see, so I don't have to look at it, right? Anyways, so that's why I want to show the people there. But let's, let's start. So, to, so the coronavirus is running crazy, man. You have stocks that are going ballistic. Let's take a look at this stock. Look at it's up like 600%, man. Yesterday was like previous close was three bucks. Holy crap, right? So, I mean, how, how do you trade this shit? How do you trade this shit? Okay, my goal today is not to curse much. Let's see if I can do it, guys. <laughs> Let's do this. So, I'm going to show you my daily routine. That's the first thing I do. I wake up in the morning. So I keep talking about this all the time, man. Trading begins before you even sit down on the computer. So yesterday I went to bed very early. I was very tired, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I was already snoring. And I woke up today at like three something in the morning over here because I'm, I'm on California time. And so three something and four something is like six or seven o'clock in, in market time, right? And so, so I'm already feeling great, dude. I, I'm feeling good. So the, the, your trading day should begin even the night before. You have to have a good night's rest, man. This is just like an athlete, but we are an athlete that's using our brain, okay? And sleep is very important. I mean, if you're tired, but you keep running, you still have an adrenaline to keep going. But if you, you're you tired, man, you're mentally tired, you, you just can't do it. You can't think clearly, and especially on alcohol, hungover. So I haven't, I've been pretty good, man. I've, I've not been drinking on weekdays for a long time now. And so, but when I do, I just take the day off, guys. Sometimes it's not worth it. And so you know yourself. Sure, you can make money because when you're hungover and drunk, you don't really care. And so you're numb to the losses, but then, you know, this is not smart. So my first advice to you is this, man. Get your personal shit in order before you even get onto the computer to trade. If you're fighting with your spouse, with whatever, if you're having, if you're scared of the coronavirus, just maybe just, just watch, don't trade. Cause I, we don't want any emotional stuff to trigger a bad trade. It's better to make zero than it is to screw up, you know, and not trade when you're, you know, hundred percent mentally, right? And take a look at this NBY. So what I like to do is I have two charts up on my screen. One's a multi-day and I, I can also bring up more charts, right? I have more charts on my, on my platform. This is corporate trading. I like to show them because you know, that's what we recommend and they're, they're, they're pretty the best locates for cheapest. And so, so take a look at this, man. It reclaimed the VWAP and it's fucking SSR. Forget it. Zombie hour. So where would I try to tackle this if I were to tackle this? So you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going through a process. I'm looking at all, I'm doing all the checks and balances, right? So I'm saying, okay, VWAP's a dollar. This thing freaking was about to die and I'm playing ReWAP. And not only that, it's SSR. SSR is short sell restriction. It means I can't short it. It makes it shorting tougher because you have to short on an uptick, meaning you have to be on an offer. You, you, you can't slam it when you're going down. So you have to fight the trend. So let me explain SSR to you guys how it works, okay? SSR, the way you figure out if a stock is SSR is if it's touched 10% below the closing price. So what I do is this, I bring out a calculator and this is how I do it myself. So previous close is 150, I do 150 times 90% because 10% triggers SSR. So if it touched 135 anytime during the open market, not the pre-market, the normal market, if it touched anytime this, it will trigger SSR. So 
what was the low of the day? The low of the day was 81 cents. Yeah. <laughs> so right now it's under, so it's SSR. Okay. What does SSR mean? Short sell restriction. What does that mean? Short sell restriction means if you're shorting, you cannot slam the bid. You can only short on the uptick. That's the offer. And so you are fighting the trend. You can only short when the stock is going up and you know, for, for me as it's fine, but it makes trading really tough. If they can put a hundred shares in and they can manipulate it and you cannot slam it. You see what I'm saying? They can hold this up. They can play games. So it makes it, makes it very difficult for short sellers. Okay. And so look at this, man, they squeeze this up. So I recognize this to be a no touch around there. If I wanted to 120 line might be the way to go. So let, let me, fuck man, don't fucking copy me. <laughs> I'm gonna lose it. I would, I would just take a short, uh, short here, man. This is, I consider this to be the outer line. Why not? This would be the outer line. So if you take a look, I mean, I shorted down here ahead of zombie time and I stuck to the rules. I stopped, I covered and I got the fuck out. And so, you see what I'm saying? So now I'm looking at the, the top, which is the 120 line. So if I wanted to, I would do a small, since it's zombie hour rules, I shouldn't be messing around. But if I did, you know, I would be doing small with a stop of maybe like, I would usually on these, I would do two lines, like down to 130 and 120, but the very small size, man, just, just small. But you know, sometimes not even worth it. The way you trade is, so that's still anticipation. Anticipation is when you try to anticipate where it's gonna go. So now it's going back on the front side again. This is still a backside, but now it's over VWAP. I can still consider it, this is like a bounce. And so if I put it at 120, it's still anticipation, but it's, it's, a, it's a calculated risk. I'm using the old data, which is the old resistance. See, it resisted at 120. So remember I said the, the support turns into the resistance. And that's why you see here, this is a, so this stock already identified as conforming to the chart. When I look at this chart, I go, this is a very high probability, high probability trade for me. It's because this stock conforms to the chart. And what the chart shows me is this, it bounced off of 120. And so 120 was a, a, is a support line. In the morning is a support line. And then it broke down and what happened? Support becomes resistance on the way back up. So it resisted on the way back up. The reason why it does this is because in my opinion, this is, this is just my back holder theory, but I think it's right. It's the fact that too many, so many guys, this overhead supply, there's guys buying at 120 as a support. And so now they're stuck in a 120 and they're just waiting to get even. So the stock drops, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm down. I just want to get even. I'm praying to get out. And so that's why the resistance forms, right? That's why support turns into resistance because there's a lot of buyers and sellers at this line. And most of the guys are buying at this line once you get out. And so that's why you have the resistance. So when I look at this chart, I, I recognize the personality of this chart. This stock conforms to the chart. I thought, like, cool, man. So I can start doing my process on it because if this, if this thing just does whatever it wants to do, how can I ever guess, you know, what it's going to do? So I'm trying to predict what it's doing based upon the historical and it's conforming the chart. Do you guys understand this concept? That I, I, I talk about a lot conforming to the chart, right? And so I could probably put a, an order near 120 and see how it performs. You know, I'm not going to do it now, but you, <laughs> I would have put like maybe 117, 118, 119, whatever you wanted to do, right? One small order there just to, you know, play by the probability. How much do you into account volume of individuals? You guys are being too technical on these questions. What percentage of this I, I look, I mean, the key is to eyeball it. You have to get to the point where you just eyeball it. You guys are being too mechanical and that's trading is not just about being the difference between a penny feel is not going to change your life. But the fact that you know that 120 is a resistance, the fact that you know 220 is resistance, 230 is resistance, is, is, the golden, is the golden takeaway from this, okay? Who cares if it's freaking two? So the point is I use the lines in addition to the candlesticks to show me information. So the point of these charts is to, to gather information and whatever information you can gather more you can do. Cool guys. Uh, you know, once again, man, this is all work in progress, guys. Work in progress. I, there's a couple of things that we showed you today. We showed you why I picked these setups. These are the bread and butter death line setup. Uh, these are the balance plays I've broken down and they conform to the chart. And so the key behind all this, once again, is understanding technical analysis. I heard a guru, Furu, say technical analysis does not mean shit. I'm like, dude, remember I posted that? I'm like, you, you fucking idiot, man. That's why you're fucking getting, that's why I'm shorting all your fucking plays at the resistance and making money, right? And so the key is learn. The first thing you need to learn is you need to learn charting. Notice I don't, I don't even talk about level two, man. Level two is, you know, the way I do is I look at 
the chart. When it comes to my lines, I look at the level two. Okay. I don't stare at the level two all day long because it goes up and down like this. You know, I learned from shit, man. These guys are saying they're reading the tape or whatever the hell. Dude, they're, this, this shit is Chinese. I, you know how many times I've, I've manipulated? I wouldn't say that. I mean, how many times I've placed big orders on level two and get people to do what I wanted to do? <laughs> so, I mean, same thing with Algo, same thing with this stuff. So, uh, the lines is what I trust. Look at this, man. 230 line on the dot, man. Look at this 110 line. These, these, these are the type of plays that, you know what I'm saying? Look at a 550 line, but it's just, you know, the meat is gone. They're like, fuck man. Oh my God. It's, tomorrow uh, on Monday, I'm going to size the fuck up again on this and hopefully it bounces up. Okay. But now it's kind of like the meat is gone. I'm taking a big risk. I already, you know, I made what I need to make on it. And the rest is like, okay, man, it sucks that I could have made a lot more. I was in a bunch of these shares, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. I'm going to end this here. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.